Hello and welcome to an Ender IO tutorial. I, in this tutorial I'll be covering some basic things like generators, uh, the various machine blocks, the dimensional anchor, anchors, and some of the conduits and their uses, as well as the armor. Alright, so first up we have our basic generators over here, Sterling generator. You stick in coal. Let's just grab ourselves some coal. And if you mouse over it while in the combustion generator GUI, you can see that it generates 16,000 RF at 20 RF. But when you have a double layer cap uh, capacitor, it increases to 42,000 at, uh, tw at 40 RF per tick. And with an octad capacitor, it jumps up again to 85,000 at 80 RF per tick. That's pretty nifty. Alright, so over here we have our combustion generators, which are the liquid fuel generators. These require water and a fuel. Starting from this side, because this is the hooch, uh, a bucket of hooch will generate 360,000 RF for uh, RF total. So let's grab ourselves some hooch rocket fuel and fire water because those are the three liquid fuels but except for the liquid nutrient distillation alright so you I uh, have this set up so that hooch will get pulled from this fluid tank and go into the generator one bucket of hooch w like I said will generate 360,000 RF but at the rate of 60 RF per tick next is rocket fuel which will generate 1.12 million RF at the rate of 160 RF per tick. Next we have fire water which will generate 1.2 million RF at the rate of 80 RF per tick. So in, essentially fire water will produce a little bit more but the combustion generator, I mean, uh, not the combust, the rocket fuel, will generate it faster. So it just uh, depends on which you want. Um, the fire water is a little bit cheaper, requiring only blaze powder in redstone, while the rocket fuel requires gunpowder. It just depends on if you can get a blaze spawner or a creeper spawner or which you prefer. And for the cooling system, I just have an extra utilities uh, transfer node uh, hooked up to a water drum just going into the back. Alright, next we have the zombie generator which uses the nutrient distillation and um, you have to do a bit of calculation because it'll only consume up to this point um, and it output that, so a little bit of quick math. Uh, it produces 798,800 RF per bucket of nutrients. Alright, so those are the power generators. Coming over here to the uh, some of the basic machines, you have your sag mill, your painting machine, your crafter, and your alloy smelter. Alright, so the sag mill is one of the first machines that you're going to want to make, and it's for this reason you want uh, you'll need silicon and you put uh, clay in there and you occasionally get out silicon or every time actually um, you can increase this with by either putting in a dark steel ball or act or just flint uh, flint will increase the main output by 120 bonus output by 125 percent and it will reduce power by 15 percent whereas the dark steel ball which has much higher durability will increase the main output by 150 the bonus output by 200 and the power reduction by 30 percent so when you can use dark steel balls because they are far better all right next up we have the painting machine now let's say that you have these conduit facades and you want them to look like, let's say, cobblestone for whatever reason. So you just stick the cobblestone in there and it will output a cobblestone facade. Let's grab one of each of those. Uh, 
Hold on. Um, you can't actually put conduit facades unless they're painted. But when you put a uh, conduit facade that's painted, you get a nice little block that hides the wire. We'll get back to that in a little bit. So, Next up is the cra auto crafter. Now for this, we are just short on gold nuggets because as you can see the pattern right here requires copper ingot, redstone, and gold nuggets to make basic capacitors. Now we have the, the redstone and the copper ingots already, so let's grab ourselves some gold nuggets and just stick them in there anywhere. And it made us 16 basic capacitors. Pretty nifty. And it doesn't even need the uh... Yeah. Doesn't need the uh, recipe to be in the same shape. You just click it in there and it'll auto craft regardless. So that's pretty nifty. Uh, let's just do it one more time to get it up to a full 64 and show you that. Yep, all the things are gone. Required four stacks of golden nuggets. Next up, we have the alloy smelter. In Ender IO, you need to make electrical steel, energetic alloy, conductive iron, and redstone alloy. You do this through the uh, alloy smelter with various metals. So, let's just say we want to make ourselves some electrical steel because that's something that you need pretty quickly so you need coal powder uh, silicon and iron so silicon coal and iron just stick those in there and what do you know it's working on making some uh, electrical steel now something to note you can use different powders for coal because for example in thermal foundation you can eat, there is pulverized coal which is essentially the same thing it'll just make electrical steel so the two are interchangeable alright next up we have the soul binder now let's uh, get a a soul vial where is that? There it is. Alright, so there's some soul vials. Now let's grab ourselves... Let's see, that is a broken cow spawner at the moment. Let's make it a sheep spawner. So grab ourselves a sheep. Now these soul vials... <laughs> can collect, uh, here let me switch into not creative, get rid of that, get rid of that. So you have your sheep here, and it's now in a bottle. You put the bottle, pick them back up. Pretty simple. It's pretty much a safari net, but with the added benefit of, say you found a spawner, let's say it's just a spider spawner, and you can put a sheep in it and it will uh, suck out uh, liquid experience and then convert the spawner to a different type. That'll take a little while and I have some open block tanks that will that have some experience in them and so it'll just do that. We'll come back to that in a, way, in a little while. Next up we have the, sh uh, the slice and splice. Alright, so for the slice and splice you use it to make the zombie electric nodes, Z controller, and Franken zombie. Uh, I already have most of the materials queued up for a z zombie electrode, I believe. You just pretty much just put the materials in. You can just shift click and it'll consume the materials. And there you go. We now have a Z, -Log z Logic zombie controller, which we can use to make other machines. Next up, we have the powered spawner. I currently have it set to capture mode because it uh, has a chicken spawner, but when I switch to spawn mode, the little progress f flames will pop up, and a chicken will spawn. That'll just keep happening for as long as the spawner is going up. And This is a good transition into this thing, the Killer Joe. 
it uses nutrient, liquid nutrient, and a sword of some variety to kill a mob. As, as, as you see, it's attacking me because I'm in front of it. So, gotta be careful. It attacks where the sword is pointing. It also uses up durability on the sword, but this is a creative uh, gotten sword, so it just used up RF. Not much of the durability, or actually any. So, um, th the Killer Joe uses nutrient tank, uh, liquid nutrient, and a sword to kill mobs. And then you can take the experience, and look, I got a little bit of experience. One thing that I forgot to do is go back to the soul binder. So when you go back to the soul binder after it's finished, it will pop out an empty soul and hey, look at a broken sheep spawner. Take that broken sheep spawner. Let's grab an Ender IO anvil because why not? And let's grab a powered spawner that is empty. Stick the anvil down, stick the powered spawner down, and the sheep spawner. And hey, you got a sheep powered spawner with sheeps in it. It did require 30 levels, so it's quite expensive to do, but hey, all it requires after that point is energy, so pretty nifty. Anyway, let's get rid of that. Next up is the dimensional transceiver. Holy cow, Fermi. Anyway. So the dimensional transceivers will send from one unit to another unit. I have this little nifty set up to show you what that they can do both. All right, so let's go in here. Say that this is in the overworld and that this is in the nether and you wanna send them between the two. Just stick it in and it pops out on the other side. These are the item conduits from Ender.io. I have it set to pull out there and put in there. You also have to set the dan uh, dimensional transceiver to pull on the input side and push on the output side. So that's a little thing that you need to do. Next up, let's grab a mine cart. And I will show you that it can also teleport mine carts as long as you have an ender rail above the uh, dimensional transceiver. So whoop, it's over there. Oh, it's over there. And that'll work if the uh, minecart is moving. And if, say, it it teleports onto this uh, rail and it has any sort of inertia going onto it, it will send its inertia in the direction of the arrow. So it would send it that way for that one, this way for that one, and that way for this one. And you can configure that with the Yamada wrench. Now, a little thing to note about this is that it requires power. Each one requires 30, I mean not 30, 10 RF per tick to keep active, so not much. But the nifty thing is, in the dimensional transceiver, you have all these little tabs that you can uh, send through. So like, say you only wanted to transport cobblestone with this, you could put cobblestone in there, or in this case solar ingots, and it would, on it would only send solar ingots. But we don't want that. You can also send redstone signal with the trans, uh, transdimensional deceiver. You can also send items as we did. You just have to have the one side as a send and one side as a receive on the same channel. You can also do this with uh, liquids and again, like you saw with the rails. Now, to show the uh, liquids let's send that to the send so it will pull from here and put into here when I go to here and go to there look at that pulling from here at the rate of 200 millibuckets per tick or so and uh, throwing it in there so not bad not bad that's the dimensional transceiver next up we have the item conduits or the conduits in general Let's grab ourselves a Yamada wrench. All right, so as you can see with the facades, when, you just, when you're just looking at it, it looks like normal cobblestone. But when you have the Yamada wrench, you can see through the uh, facade to the wire beneath. 
So these are the four types of, uh, of cables. There is the energy ones, redstone, fluid, and item. Granted, for the fluid, there is ones that aren't pressurized, which will only be affected by gravity, and the redstone, which you can have insulated or uninsulated. I personally prefer the insulated redstone because it is far more configurable. You also have these nifty little conduit switches, which when you click on them, turns off and on a redstone signal. Now, as long as we're on redstone, as you can see, this is an uninsulated redstone thing, so whenever a redstone signal is sent through any line, this lamp will turn on. Let's turn that off. This uh, lever right here is connected up to the green channel, which is this light. When you flip on that, oh look, the green light turned on, but the brown light did not. Let's flip that off. This lever right here is on brown. Flip that, oh, and look at the brown light fl flipped on. So, there you go. You can uh, have all the lights on, or just one light on. It's pretty configurable, based on uh, whatever you have it set to. Alright, so another nifty thing about these conduits is you can have all four intersecting at a single block. The way that you would configure this is you have the Yamada around, and you shift, and then you can use the scroll wheel, and now you're only looking at power, now you're only looking at redstone, now you're only looking at fluid, and now you're only looking at item. So that's pretty n and uh, ME. It also has ME cables if you have applied energistics installed. So that's pretty cool that you can have all four cables going through one block. And then let's uh, grab a. Oh, 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 there we go. Let's grab a facade, and there we go. Now it just looks like all the wires are going into a single piece of cobblestone, but in reality, they're all going to their various different things. Now, one thing to note about the, uh, at least the fluid ones, is they are, by default, uh, same goes for the atom ones, set to only extract when there is a redstone signal. So, when I flip this lever right here, it will start outputting lava. Pretty nifty. Whereas, over it, whereas if you don't want to use a redstone signal, you can just toggle it to active without signal, and it will start pulling when you have no redstone signal. But, for example, if we get ourselves a, another tank, real quick, and a lever. Actually, no, let's grab our... Yeah, a lever. Lever will work. Throw down a lever. Let's flip that on. And look, at, uh, it had uh, some fluid stored in the line, but it's no longer outputting because it is set to not send when there's a signal on. But flip that off, and it starts sending water again. Now, another drawback of the uh, fluid cables, but is also pretty nice, is you can't connect uh, fluid cables that have liquids in them. They have to have no fluids in them in order to connect. So like, say you have water and lava running next to each other, you can't have them running down the same line. So that's a little bit of a downside. Now last up we have the travel anchors. Okay, so come up to a travel anchor. When you're standing on them, you can see the other travel anchors and jump to teleport to a different one. The tra staff of traveling will allow you to see them regardless, and then you can just right click on them and teleport. That will use up a little bit of power from the staff of traveling, but it's pretty nifty for getting around your base if you don't want to have doors and corridors and all that. You can just teleport. So that's pretty much it for the blocks. Um, I didn't even cover a little bit of what you can do with the conduits. It's all configurable. You just take an empty hand, click on the uh, side that uh, is entering or exiting a chest or in an area, and you can set to extract, insert, disable, in and out, set the channel, set its priority, you can add filters. There's a bunch of things you can do with them. It's really cool. 
But the last set thing that you can do is grab the armor, since I took it off. And it, when you have them fully upgraded, they will uh, consume power instead of durability. And they will have various other things, like sound locator, which when something's walking around, let's turn that on, you can you see little uh, sound things. So it helps you locate various entities based on sound. Turn that off because it's a little annoying. You can also have a glider. And let's just hop up on here, hop up on here. And look at me, I'm gliding. Whee! All right, so that's the chest plate. On the legs, you can turn on speed. Oh, well, that's the helmet right there. You can activate night vision. It also uh, recharges during the day if you have solar panels installed. And it will also, uh, yeah, there's the keybind. It will also show up or nodes if you have that enabled. So that's pretty nifty if you have Thumbcraft. Let's turn off the night vision, turn it back on. And then that's sound, speed, there we go. And with the speed, you get a speed one potion or so. So you can get some pretty nifty speeds with the glider and the thing. Other, whoa, what did I hit? Oh, uh, Killer Joe. All right, so let's turn off the speed. And uh, the last thing that it has is the step assist. So you don't have to jump to walk up this you have step assist on. When it's off, you just walk into walls. Um, so that's all the different power-ups that you can do it and do with that. Um, for the various suits, you do that with various items like uh, the capacitors for the energy and the other things. Check the wiki for the actual upgrades for the armor. I forget what they are like, and I think you can put a photo Volix cell on the helmet with an anvil and then it gets solar, it's things like that. So it's pretty nifty. Um, I believe I've covered a lot of the basics for Ender Isle. There's some blocks that I've left out like the attractor, the aversion, the experience, and the enchanter. Those are pretty self-explanatory. When you have the attractor uh, obelisk down and you have it powered, it will attract entities to it when you have an aversion obelisk down and filled with soul vials of a certain type and it's powered it will push away mobs of those types the experience obelisk uh, you can store experience or retrieve experience pretty nifty and then there is the enchanter which will just you put a book and quill plus an uh, enchanted item alright so now you have a looting three bow we want to... what? No. Oh, okay. You don't put the bow in there. I was thinking of the anvil. Sorry. But you can like put uh, gold ingots in there for that. Just check out the recipes. There's 14 different tabs of things that you can enchant with the enchanter that is different from, uh, say, a normal enchanting table. Let's check if I forgot anything real quick. Um, there's uh, different ladders that are faster than regular ladders. There's different pressure plates that only react to players. There is anvils that last m far longer. There's a chest that will suck up things. Pretty much everything else is self-explanatory in this, except for the vats. Uh, that is one thing that I did not show, which I am sorry. So let's grab uh, some various things to get the vats going. So, let's grab that, throw down a capacitor, and put a vat on top of it. Actually, no, wait, let's do it over here where the uh, water is. So, capacitor, vat. It's now, it now has water in it, because that's the input liquid. And let's get a potato and sugar. Stick that in there and it'll craft you up some hooch. Pretty much um, 
if you want to use the vat, just look at the recipes. Uh, hooch plus gunpowder and redstone, rocket fuel, blaze powder. Then you can use seeds, poisonous potato, potatoes, apples, wheat, th those sort of things for uh, the hooch and heads or various food products to make the nutrient distillation for the various things. So that is the vat. You can get up an automated line with them. The last thing that you need to know about Ender IO, which is something that I've shown but not talked about, is this little configure IO button. You can uh, open it up and then you get this 3D thing. You rotate it and move it around by using left click. And then you can use right click to set the side to push pull or push and pull or completely disable a side. That's how I set up these uh, tanks to auto draw into their various generators. One last thing before we end this tutorial is I've uh, had it in the machines but I never really mentioned it is the capacitors can upgrade machines. The double layer will increase it a little bit and the octad will increase it far more. Um, pretty much your goal with all the machines that have this little slot right here is to get a octad capacitor in it because that will increase its speed and efficiency and energy capacity the most. Although when you're first starting out that is far harder to do because it requires these vibrant alloys which is uh, requires ender pearls and energetic alloys and pretty much just go for the double layer capacitors as fast as you can in the alloy smelter because you're going to be using the alloy smelter a lot and then upgrade that to an octad as soon as you can so you don't have to sit there for a couple minutes forever you, you can get it down to pretty quick for its operations in any case that it should cover most of the basics and a little bit of the complexities behind ender io which is probably one of my favorite tech mods because of its configurability and its really nifty guis and upgrade system in any case this is the end, so I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it useful. Until next time, bye bye now.